Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check a couple of the latest products by BDFPV. The first items that I'm going to show you belong to the new BDFPV Express LRS line of products. In case you are not familiar with Express LRS, it's a LoRa based open source radio project, which similarly to Crossfire should get you pretty far and provide you with a low latency and stable radio link. You might have noticed that a couple of companies, including BDFPV, recently released their Express LRS line of products, and that's because, first of all, Express LRS is an open source project, which means that their developers practically work for free and provide these manufacturers all the specs for manufacturing the hardware, and also because Express LRS recently reached a pretty mature stage. So basically, all the products from different companies are going to communicate with each other as long as they are using the same firmware and, of course, using the same frequency as Express LRS is available in both 2.4 GHz and 900 MHz frequencies. In addition, you should note that in the next couple of weeks, I am going to release a full guide that's going to show you how to use the Express LRS system including updating and binding the receivers and transmitters, so stay tuned. As for the Beta FPV Express LRS line of products, the items that I've got in hand are first of all the 2.4 GHz version of the Express LRS Nano RF module. It has a maximum output power of 500 mW. It is using an SMA antenna connector. It is available in either 2.4 GHz 915 MHz or 868 MHz frequencies and it is bundled with both directional and omnidirectional radio antennas. In addition, it also comes with a quick start guide and since the Express LRS firmware is being rapidly developed, it is highly recommended to update its firmware to the latest stable available firmware before starting using it. Here you can see what it looks like when the RF model is mounted in the expansion bay of the TBS Tango 2. Just like a Crossfire TX, setting up the model is done using a Lua script which you'll need to download to the microSD card. After executing it, it's going to take you to this menu where you'll be able to adjust the packet rate, set the telemetry ratio, set the RF power between 500 milliwatts, which is the highest output power down to 10 milliwatts, which is available in this version since it has been updated to the latest available firmware. Next, in case your model supports it, you'll be able to adjust the RF frequency and this one is restricted to 2.4 gigahertz, so it cannot be adjusted. Next, you can initiate the bind procedure and over here, you'll be able to update the firmware of the model using the Wi-Fi option which I'm going to discuss in the upcoming video. In addition, on the bottom of the radio module, you can find a USB Type-C connector, which is going to enable you to connect it to your computer and update its firmware as well. It features a bind button, so in order to initiate the bind procedure, you need to short press it. Over here, you can find an LED indicator, which is going to indicate the output power of the radio module. It features a heatsink, and you should note that you should always power up the model when an antenna is connected, as otherwise the radio model is going to be damaged. Next on the menu, we've got the Beta FPV Express LRS Nano Receiver. Just like the TX, it is available in three versions, so make sure to purchase the correct one in order to match your transmitter. As for packaging, it comes with a quick start guide, two clear heat rings, four 6cm long silicon coated wires, straight pin headers, and a small antenna which is using an IPX connector. As for its dimensions, it is pretty similar to a Crossfire receiver. It weighs 0.8 grams without the antenna and 1.7 grams including it. Its input voltage is 5 volts. It is using the same interface of a Crossfire receiver, so the ground is connected to the ground on the flight controller. 5 volts is connected to 5 volts. The TX is connected to RX on the flight controller and RX on the radio receiver to the TX on the flight controller and under beta flight it is treated the same as a crossfire receiver. The last item on the Express LRS list is actually my favorite. 
This lightweight 1S all-in-one F4 flight controller features an integrated Express LRS radio receiver, so over here you can find its antenna connector. It's using a USB Type-C connector, features an integrated 12 amperes BLLES 4-in-1 ESC, two full UART ports, which one of them is in use by the Express LRS radio receiver, but it does feature a dedicated smart audio pad, which is using soft serial. In terms of packaging, inside its box, along with the flight controller, you are getting a BT 2.0 connector, an antenna for the radio receiver, and a bag with empty screws, nuts, and rubber grommets. As for its weight, on its own, the flight controller weighs 4.4 grams. Including the radio receiver antenna, it weighs 5.4 grams, and including the BT 2.0 connector, the total weight is 6.3 grams. In addition, it's using 25.5 by 25.5 mm M3 mounting holes, and its outer dimensions are 33.1 by 32.8 by 5 mm. So as far as I can tell, it's a pretty interesting flight controller, and as long as the radio receiver is going to function properly, which is something that I am about to test soon, it might be the perfect candidate for a lightweight 1S 3-inch long-range build. The last product that I've got for you today from Beta FPV is a 6 parts 1S battery charger. This pretty compact battery charger will enable you to charge up to 6 1S batteries simultaneously. It features both BT 2.0 and PH 2.0 battery connectors. The maximum output current per channel is 1 amperes, and the BT 2.0 and PH 2 connectors on the same channel shouldn't be used simultaneously. The battery end voltage can be set to 4.2 volts or 4.35 volts using this slider. It is powered using a USB Type-C connector, and you can choose whether to get the charger on its own, or for an extra $10 you can get it bundled with a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable and a 30 watts fast charger. As for using the charger, it is extremely simple. Next to each channel you can find an LED which is going to flash in case a battery is not connected, it's going to turn solid when the battery is being charged, and once the charging procedure is complete, the LED is going to be turned off. You should note that in case you would like to charge 6 batteries simultaneously at an output current of 1A per channel, you will need to use a 30 watts power adapter such as this one, Personally, I think that it's worth adding the extra $10 because it's pretty useful and will enable you to charge your mobile devices as well. And in addition, in case you don't need to charge 6 batteries simultaneously, this USB charger is a pretty good option. And on top of being a charger, it also double acts as a battery tester. Anyway, that's going to be it for my pretty quick hands-on review of some of the latest Beta FPV products. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. Keep in mind that I'm going to further test the Express LRS products in upcoming videos, so in case you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.